All right, everybody, uh, we're going to kick this thing back off. Um, I'll be bringing Wilson on here shortly. Um, I think we are 25 speakers in today between track A and track B. So it's been awesome. Um, we had a little uh, mindset from Colton just barely, and now we're going to hear a little more tactical stuff from uh, Wilson. Wilson, I'm going to bring you on. How's it going, man? You hearing me all right? I hear you. How's it that going? Thanks for having me. I've seen all day, dude. Sisu rocks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, Wilson reached out and uh, we were talking about a couple things you wanted to talk about. So um, a shift that you made in your business uh, recently with, with, I mean, obviously everything that's happening, right? COVID. Um, but maybe first introduce yourself a little bit. I'm sure we all love to hear a little more about you and your business and uh, where you're coming from. Thanks for having me first off. And my goal is to add as much value to your audience as possible. So a little bit about me. I've been in the real estate industry for nine years. I started building a team about five years ago. And ever since then, we're currently at seven agents, two ISAs, and actually six staff right now. Um, the last two years, including this year, we've sold over a hundred million. And each year about our price point's about one million per property. So at about 100 plus uh, in terms of transactions. So with that, you know, our top two lead gen has always been farming and open houses, and yet we haven't been able to execute on that just because of the environment that we're in. So we had to make some uh, transitions in terms of our spend and track our ROI differently, and our activities obviously have changed too. So excited to share, and of course, any other questions that people might have. Yeah, uh, everyone feel free. So so the Facebook comments link to our comments right here. If you have a specific question that you want to go into, um, nothing's off limits. Uh, I'm sure, Wilson, you're, I'm, I'm putting it out there that you're an open book, but I'm sure you got a lot. Uh, I am. I definitely <laughs> am. More than happy to share. You know, I've learned so much from other people, just like the guy in, before me, Colton. I used to look at his videos when I started in the industry. Oh, cool. He was probably one of the first people to have videos on YouTube. So shout out to Colton. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I've, I've said this before on, on the stream probably, but such a cool community around real estate that, uh, you know, we got all these people from different markets tuning in. And if you want to go and learn what people are doing in other markets, you just rip and duplicate it right there in your in your own market and no one's mad at you for it, right? It's kind of cool. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about this shift. I mean, wh what when you say, you know, your shift from, from open houses and farming, um, it was, sure it was a conscious thing. What I mean, when did it? How did it just happen forcibly when COVID hit, or or what did that look like? Yeah, and just to share a little bit of background in in our area, we're referred to as a SWAT team in real estate just nice. because of how close knit our agents and uh, myself and my staff are. Um, we meet every morning, and it used to be in person, and it wasn't a hard requirement. I can't force ten nine nine non-employees to be and show up at you know a certain place however we did tie uh, obviously showing up and hitting certain standards to rewards such as getting um uh lower hanging fruit leads from the business uh, more support obviously different types of opportunity as long as you show up in the expectation that we have so showing up was a big part of and still is a big part of what we do and we still show up every day via zoom and of course, we okay. talked about our wins and gratitude and the things that we're encountering. I think what started changing was because so many of my agents, actually uh, five out of six of them, not including myself, started from outside the industry. They were brand new agents that had no experience uh, with real estate sales, maybe a little background in sales. But as we know, real estate sales is more about building relationships and is about selling <laughs> property. Yeah. I think as long as you earn the trust and you build a relationship with someone, you're able to be in a position to help them with a purchase or obviously a listing. So uh, from training these new agents to being out there, uh, you know, we used to have a requirement where each week you have to spend eight hours in your farm, whether you're knocking or you're flying and waving at people. That was part of our requirements, eight hours of lead gen. That also included being at open houses. If you're going to be there from Sunday one to four, that's three hours of lead gen. And there's going to be certain metrics that you're going to have to hit, such as how many people walk in and there's a ratio of how many people you're going to capture their contact information for. Clearly, it has changed. So what we had to double down on was the database that we built, was were the people that we've met throughout the years. So fortunate enough, because 
I've been farming for some years, obviously we have some sort of reputation and notoriety in our area where we started focusing much more on the digital space. So at the beginning of the year, I already made a conscious decision last year that I was going to hire a DRock. And I'm sure you you know who what DRock is, right, Zach? I, I, you need to elaborate a little bit for me. I got to hear this. <laughs> yeah, so DRock is the nickname of Gary V's videographer. Oh, and yeah. Okay. Basically, yep. Yeah, basically DRock basically follows and films and edits pretty much everything at the beginning when Gary was building out his uh, consulting business. So we made a conscious effort that if we're going to spend a little bit less time and, and money on lead gen efforts that are hard copy mail and or uh, being face to face and spending time over the weekend, I should be spending more time creating content. I should be spending more time brainstorming how I could add value in digital space because I can't physically be present in my much as you know it used to be just because it's a little less um, acceptable, right? Knocking on a door in this market is totally different from uh, pre-COVID. People would open, yeah. you would have a conversation. You can't really do that anymore. So ha hiring that person really transformed my business. I'm constantly thinking about what am I putting out on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and that's even evolving. And we just hired a creator for our business to really, we have so much content that we haven't really pieced together for each respective platform that eventually we're, we have this individual helping us package it and uh, write the copy and um, getting to a point where we have a little bit more in terms of brand cohesion and what we represent and the pillars of our content. So th those are some things that we've been working on. And I, I think the other thing to add to this Oh, yeah, Sorry, Zach. Is, I'm still work. actively selling. You're good. Uh, I'm I'm still going on, on listing appointments. So I'm still actively selling. I'm still a player in the game of real estate sales, just as much as my agents are. Because not it's a conscious choice. I think getting back to basics and knowing what they're going through is important for me to coach them or mentor them. And at the same time, it's it's important for them to see that their lead is still doing what they're doing on a day to day basis. I don't want to be a hypocrite and ask them to do something and I don't do it myself. So maybe it'll get to a stage where I don't have to be in actively in sales, but that means I find a higher use of my time. So yep. at a later time. I love that. Um, so you actually hired a full-time videographer then? That's right. Hired a full-time videographer. He's also pretty talented when it comes to editing content. Nice. And, and so I'm guessing you're just, I mean, I know I, I'm, the, it's clicking for me, the whole DRock thing. I mean, Gary V puts out content, basically anything and everything, right? Yeah, uh, he's an open book, so. <laughs> is this is this recruiting content? Is it content for, I don't even know if you're actively recruiting, but maybe there's some recruiting content. Maybe it's more client focused. Like what are the, give me some examples maybe of content that you've been grabbing over the last. Yeah, so content, I think traditional real estate, you think about, you know, property shoots, you think about a end product of, you know, a, a property that you prep to hit the market. Um, when we create content in real estate, it's more so about the journey of a property going from what it used to be to now it's show ready. So documenting that journey, contractors painting, you know, gardeners, putting mulch out there. We like to document and share with people what it is that we exactly do. A lot of consumers, they might see the end product, but they don't see the progress, the process to get there. So parts of what we do is kind of like Gary, right? We don't see the day to day of every single agent out there, but what if we did, right? I think people want to hear more about the stories, whether it's about a house, about a client or about us and what we do behind the scenes, because I think people are naturally curious and they want to consume information. And then honestly, there's nothing that I do differently than anyone else out there that's starting as a new agent, other than I've applied myself for the last nine years. I've trialed and erred and, you know, I had good mentors along the way. And of course, now it's as obviously demographics change, you know, most of the sellers in our area are baby boomers or older. And, you know, th those are our primary targets that postcards might work. But as the dem demographics change of home ownership of people purchasing property, how they find you, uh, you want to be top of mind, right? So how are we putting ourselves out there in different ways, but also in ways that we can add value to give perspective on what we do and how, how we can help these individuals. So our content is usually surrounded by and answering a question, does this video actually add value? So whether it's just a simple market update or it's a progress shoot, or more so we're focused right now on client testimonials, on featuring 
uh, giving spotlights on businesses that are local, that also yeah. serve our community, that have great mission and value statements that we want to spread the message of, and of course, collaborate with them and share our audiences because you know we trying this alone um, and um, not involving other people, it's kind of like team building, right? You can do it alone and you're only gonna get so far because you have limitations on capacity and time. And I think there's so many ways that we could collaborate and create win-win relationships, whether it's people on our team or whether it's you know sharing, if I hired a full-time videographer, how can I maximize that time? And how can I have this individual express his passion by shooting and editing content? And it's perfect for us to be aligned with other business owners that way too. So I don't know if that answers your question for content. Oh. Yeah, and, and content it's it's a it's a long hard game. It's 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 a marathon, right? I mean, are you yeah. seeing since you brought this videographer on, what kind of results are you seeing? Are you actually getting leads from it? Are you building that following? Like how's it been? How's the journey been so far? Yeah, we're we're still trying to figure it out because our, our way of thinking has been kind of like sending a post not being selected audience and just blanketing it and having a value proposition or a reason for someone to reach out. So of course we're in the beginning as we hired this videographer, any content that he created, we posted on social. Yet we have to become a little bit more strategic. Do we create a different channel for different purposes? Do we brand slightly differently if the purpose of the video is for coaching, for example, versus targeted to a buyer or seller. So we're still in the process of figuring it out. I think the key takeaway that other people should take is you don't need to hire a videographer. Just use your phone and film content and put it out there and make adjustments as you go. And the results that we're getting is, is good. I mean, so much of social is friends and family. They mm -hmm. want to see you doing well. I mean, you could be the pillar of positivity for your community, which is your friends and your relatives that you're connected with on Facebook by putting good news out there. I mean, how much negative shit how much negative stuff are we seeing out there right now, right? So I want to be known as a person that will show that I'm applying myself in a difficult time. I do not have control of external factors of COVID, of fires here in California or of the election. Yet, I, no matter if the Lakers win or lose or if the fire, you know, you know, goes to more places, it's super unfortunate, but I still have to take care of myself. No matter who's going to be the president, I still have to show up for myself, my family, my friends, and be hopefully someone that could make a difference in my community. And that's, that's, you know, the fundamentals of how we operate. You know, people still want to pursue their goals, buying and selling. And of course, you know, people want to grow their businesses. So, yeah, of course. So a lot of what we're talking about is I'm assuming you and your, you're growing your team's brand but are you coaching and, and are your agents, I'm assuming also focused on their own content and what they're putting out and maybe you've been able to apply some of that to them as well. Yeah, so just to give you some more feedback on that, um, the, the theme of our team for my sales agents is how can I make sure that myself, if I have a luxury on the team, they should have the luxury too. Otherwise, it, I would be a hypocrite. Yeah. Secondly is the luxuries that we get are because it helps us increase our dollar per hour. So I only want my agents to focus on a high dollar producing task because if you're doing anything else, it doesn't make sense for me to hire all these people, including my videographer. Right. So it's important for our staff to be able to take things off our plate so we can be productive. And going to your point, we want to get to a point where we can help with their social management. Because if more people than ever are reaching out via social, friends and relatives, or are growing your following, if that's important to you, people are going to, now in the past, people might call off a postcard and say, hey, I got your postcard, and it looks like you do a lot of work here, I'm thinking about selling. Nowadays, they get your postcard, they're going to research you online, and they're going to find you. How findable are you? How's your social proof? Do you have any testimonials? How's your presentation online? Because they're already vetting you out before you even get the phone call. Mm -hmm. So it's important how we show up online. It's important for us to be findable. And I want all my agents to be seen and of course to have good values and to be seen as um, good people doing quality work. And if I have a luxury such as a videographer shooting content for me, my team members should have it too. Love it. Um, shift gears here a little bit. Uh, for yep. the, You mentioned at the beginning of the call that you guys run the, the SWAT team model. And I've, I've been hearing, or SWAT team, SEAL team, I don't know. I, I, I've just been hearing a little bit more about it lately, and I'd love to hear what that is to you and, and what this model means for you guys. Yeah, um, I'm fortunate to have a really good mentor, and I model a lot of my business off of Ben Kenny up in uh, okay. Bellingham, Washington. 
And uh, I followed him ever since I really started growing my team. So a lot of the things that he's taught me, obviously I've applied. And um, the most important thing about our team is probably going to be the retention. We haven't recruited for the past year and a half because I wanted to make sure I'm adding value to the agents I do have on my team. So I'm, I'm very happy to say that pretty much all of my agents should be close to at least six figures, not including myself. So all six of the other agents are going to be uh, close, if not at six figures or above and you know my top agents making multiples of six figures so i'm very happy about that because being a team lead it's not just about myself anymore the brand might be me the team name might be me but it's because rebranding is difficult <laughs> uh, and <laughs> rebranding is like starting over so i think uh generally speaking for me it's allowing giving uh the, the platform for my agents to be able to produce so I uh, I was swiping on my computer and it took me out. I'm happy it put me back in. But yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, I I get that part. Okay, so um, SWAT team model. It's a smaller team, admin heavy. Is 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 that the gist of it? Or yeah. Um, so the theme is increasing dollar per hour. The theme is taking the things off the, the plates of our agents that they shouldn't be doing. So for example, I'll share with you a little bit about how it works. I'm the listing agent on the team. Let's say I get a call from a seller today. I pick it up, I book the appointment, I calendar invite my listing manager. She preps everything for me. And let's say it's tomorrow. I show up tomorrow to the office, I pick up the package, I go and close. Let's say I get it signed. I give it back to her. Anything from vendors, from preparation, from the timelines, from documenting the progress of the property, staging, cleaning, the photography, everything is coordinated by her. And then once it's on the market, nowadays we use Calendly for obviously scheduling in 30 minute increments. Yep. And she's the one that's asking for feedback. Once we get an offer, I show back up and I negotiate. Once it gets an escrow, I hand it off to my client care and our escrow manager. That person is the one that communicates with the client, with title, with the lender, with anyone that's involved until close. Next time I touch the file, I say, congratulations. I'm so happy you work with our team. And I hope that you had a great experience. We're going to send a survey out. So I guess, Zach, from what you heard, how, many, how much time did I spend with the seller? I mean, it doesn't sound like a whole lot. <laughs> or it's it sounds not like all the time you spent was with the seller, right? Yes. And I, the way that was best presented to me that I'm going to reshare is it's kind of like a doctor's office. You know, if your doctor was signing you, you in as a receptionist, was taking your vitals and, and asking you to, the, the questions as a nurse and uh, was also the doctor diagnosing and prescribing and, and collecting payment from you, you probably ask yourself, if my doctor can't afford his staff members, what's he doing wrong, mm -hmm. right? So real estate should be seen the same way. As an individual agent, I can only execute on so much. Whether you scale a team to multiple members or you, at least you have an admin that takes care of obviously the things in the back end, I think in some way or fashion, in order for you to scale and to deliver predictable results, you're going to need some specialties within your business. So that's what it looks like for, at least in my viewpoint, a proper team. And that way allows me in the last two years too, as we've closed over a hundred million plus every year, I take out two months off. One month is accumulation of me traveling for education. And another month is me taking vacation with my family. And so I'm working 10 months out of the year. Of course, this year I haven't been able to travel. So I've spent a little more time in my business, which is not a problem. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm working 10 months in a year, I have leverage in my life. I don't work. I haven't worked. I've worked in the last 36 months, three buyers, one of them being myself. And the other two, I showed one property and got a contract. So I don't work buyers in, in my team anymore. And that's a luxury that I've earned, right? It's nothing like, oh, I've grown a team to a certain point where I feel like I don't want to work it, so I don't work it. It's more so I get to the point where my lead gen is focused on listings. And if I can spend most of my time with sellers, I want to do that. Or I spend more time coaching and mentoring my agents, I want to do that. So I think it starts with taking inventory of what your strengths are and then focusing on it. And hopefully you can get to a point where you have a leverage in your life so you can operate at a higher level. So you can take time off when you want to because yeah. most agents, if you're operating solo, when you take time off or when there's a family emergency, as you commit no time, your business is going to fall. And that's what we call what the roller coaster of real estate, mm -hmm. right? You work hard and hard and hard lead gen, lead follow. You get to the point, you got a couple escrows, you start babysitting your escrows. You're not lead genning anymore. 
and you start the whole cycle all over again. So that's the power of a team, at least how I see it. On the buy side, it's similar. There's certain things that my buyer agents don't touch. And that's how we justify the splits that we do have. So I'm fully transparent. It works, right? And we've been doing it for the last five years, growing the team. And I have relatively high retention on the team. Every single agent's been here for at least a year and a half, just only because we haven't recruited anyone recently. So, Very cool. Um, I want to talk, I mean, our world at C2 is numbers tracking, accountability, that type of stuff. How, how does that look? How do you guys run that today? How do you do your accountability? How do you, you know, create this culture around your team? Culture is first showing up every day for yourself. So, and of course, for your team members, because when you don't show up, that's, that's showing that you're not committed to yourself and your team members. So, you know, it's, it's just like if I miss the day, which I don't, you can call me out. You know, yeah. I like to be treated that way because I like to be called out when I'm not doing something right in your eyes. I want you to communicate that. If there's a lack of communication in terms of how we believe the expectations of our team should be operated individually, a uh, person by person, we're going to have issues later on. Um, you know, as people say, there's going to be uh, resentment that's built, right? If I don't have a, let's say Zach, you're on my team and we don't talk for two weeks yet you've been asking for help and you know, you don't know how to ask because I'm not approachable. Eventually it's going to get to a point where it's going to blow up and you're going to say, well, Wilson, you don't help me anyway. So I'm leaving your team. Right. So the consistency in the meetings is very important. One-on-ones with my agents once a week is very important. So one-on-ones once a week and team meetings as well, weekly. One-on-ones once, once a week, team meetings once a week. A huddle is pretty much every day. We have a breakdown on Wednesdays. That's my coaching days. So I, that's when I'm kind of not doing real estate sales. And then to answer your question regarding stats, we, we track our stats. So every day, our minimum requirement on a team is 35 or sorry, 25 contacts. Yeah. And contacts nowadays could be a back and forth text message, a phone call that's alive, or let's say communication via email or a message anywhere, right? We want to track that. And it, it's done and it's visual and you document the names and everyone's able to see at the same time. And that's translated obviously to a, currently another spreadsheet. So I'm sure we you know, there's definitely things that we could improve upon that for visual, right? Yeah. I think yeah. we can gamify it a little bit more for sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask this. So this huddle, this daily, you guys do a daily huddle now. Um, was that something you implemented? already had in place because i know a lot of teams implementing it just COVID, right was it something you already had yep. in place yep great question i remember the days when i didn't have my team where i showed up to the office by myself in an office of over 180 agents oh. and there was only the front desk lady and maybe one or two handful of agents that showed up so i took the whole training room as if it was my conference room and i made calls every day for a long time until I started building my team. So the habit of the huddle was already built before I had my team. And hence why it's so important still for me to this day. I mean, I have, you know, 14 other people on a team, sales and ops, yet I still find it's very important for me to show up every day, be visible for my people and also be visible for myself. Otherwise I would be cheating myself, right? It's kind of like if, if you know who Ed Milet is, if you're, if, if your life is like a movie, yet you couldn't hear the volume, there's no sound. If someone was watching your activities, would they be proud, right? If it was a family member or would they be disappointed? Mm -hmm. If no one was watching you, the hardest part in our business is if you're a solo operator and no one's watching you, what are you doing? Yeah. Hopefully you're not wasting time, right? For me, I don't want to waste time. The, the last thing I want to be associated with is being mediocre. I want to be able to push myself and I have no regrets. You know, everyone operates differently, but that's, that's what I want for myself. I love it. And, uh, so in, in these huddles, do you have like a structure of how you run these huddles time length? Like what does a, what does a huddle look like for you each day? Yeah. The first 30 minutes is going to be the gratitude. So I'm grateful that the sun's shining today and it's not as smoky. I'm grateful. I'm having a call with Zach and you know, with Sisu and super grateful for the opportunity to share. I'm grateful I actually have clothes. I have a microphone I can use. You know, I have a computer that works. I have air to breathe, right? <laughs> we start with gratitude. Everyone starts there, you know. Uh, then we talk about our wins. It's, it's sometimes hard to find wins when there's so much negativity. But if we have a focused time where we can talk about my win is 
I had a past client that reached out that's touring single families now. So my assumption is he's thinking about moving up. That's my win. You know, it not, yeah. might not be a transaction right now, but it's going to maybe lead to one. And it shows that he trusts me enough the first transaction that they were happy enough to reach back out to ask questions. That's a win. And everyone goes around and shares a win. And eventually we review stats. Uh, if there's scripts that we need to role play, if there's certain things that we need to talk about, you know, if there's things that my agents are seeing in the market, we'll have a discussion about it. If we have a guest speaker, if um, there's, uh, you know, a new video that we shot that we want feedback on, we typically talk about that at the second half of our huddle. Nice. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot, um, you know, especially now that we're in this virtual environment, a lot of people not going into office. If you can, and I, I got people that, you know, maybe don't run as long of a huddle, 15 minutes. If you can just get everyone on the phone for 15 minutes, cameras on, meaning I've got motivation to get up and actually put some clothes on in the morning because I got to show up to this huddle, even if it's just 15 minutes long. I've, that can be massively game changing in, in just everyone's mindset. I love that you mix in the gratitude and the positivity, it, right? It absolutely is. Yeah. If you don't mind me sharing one thing, it's kind of oh. like nowadays, I'm sure people, if they're having dinners is usually with family and the frequency it's huddles is kind of like this. You're, you're spending so much time with your work family that you should be in tune with the desires or goals and their struggles. It's kind of like if you have a family dinner once a week, you should show up and you should be attentive, right? You should have your phone away. You should have your screen on, right? You yeah. want to be engaging, right? You want to learn about what your parents have been up to during COVID. You want to show that you care, right? So if, if our obligation for a huddle and our work and business life is at or equal to the commitment that you give to your own family and your close friends, that's when you know that you're truly committed to your success and your people's success. You're showing up in the way that hopefully you should. Otherwise, maybe it's opposite, right? Imagine family dinners where sometimes the kids are always on their phones and they're not engaged and they're just there. And it's like, you know, your family spent so much time to, to cook you and be able to afford the dinner on the table, yet you're not grateful for it. You just overlook it. And one day it's going to go, it's going to be gone, right? So take advantage of the moment right now, whether you're on a team, you're by yourself, at least you have the opportunity to prospect and wake up in the morning, right? Yeah. You're, there's so many things that could go, could go wrong and you can never predict it. So, and there's other people that are less fortunate and it's unfortunate. And you know, that's the power of perspective. Just take care of yourself and do the best you can. Absolutely. Um, everyone, as, as we uh, wind this up, make sure if you have any questions, drop them there in the comments. We would love to take uh, some questions here. Um, Wilson, I think, think we covered uh, what, what we wanted to cover, right? Uh, uh, yeah. it, just a shift, right? Everyone's shifting. And I think it sounds like your shift has been very positive. Uh, anything else you want to leave us with, man? No, I think um, going back to the last part of, I think what Colton was saying, and um, if I remember correctly, it, it's, a, it's amazing. You were saying actually at the beginning of this call um, that the agent community is, is amazing and I can't agree more. Um, you'd be surprised that most people are willing to help. You just have to ask, right? Just like I'm sure if you, if you got a hold of Zach, he would more than be happy to help you. So yeah. all, the, all the agents and all the people that you've seen on these uh, presentations, just reach out if you resonate or you connect at all. You know, If you wanna ask a question, we're all here to help, so. I did get one question, Wilson. Um, your huddle, you're doing um, what are you doing them on Zoom now? Yeah, we're doing them on Zoom. Some people come into the office, and of course, where we have PPE in order for us to do, make sure that uh, everyone's safe. Okay, very cool. All right, man. Well, I think that's good for now. Um, thanks for the questions. We will uh, wrap this one up. We got Jim Gray and uh, Sean Goers here next. So, uh, Wilson. You totally rocked it, man. Thanks for hopping on. Um, we'll take a short Thanks for having me. And we'll, uh, we'll go into the next one. Perfect. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Wilson. We'll see you.